Wait, you know, you remember Portland, Oregon? Uh, Portland, Oregon, I, I visited there a number of times, and it, it, Portland, Oregon is, is, has to be one of the most beautiful cities in, in the world, certainly in the United States. It's, it's gorgeous there. It's, it's unbelievably green. There are trees everywhere. Um, it is uh, rolling hills, rolling hills. There's a big river that, that flows, um, uh, you know, flows through town or at the edge of town. There are lots of green spaces, a lot of parks, lots of hiking. Uh, you know, if you drive up from Portland, Oregon, along the Columbia River, uh, lots of beautiful waterfalls. I mean, it's just a gorgeous part of the world. It's, it's beautiful. It rains a lot. That's the one downside. But it is a, a truly beautiful place. And, and Portland, Oregon, the downtown Portland, Oregon, used to be um, a, um, just, a, again, a, a friendly, uh, a nice place to hang out. With, it was, Portland always was a very foodie oriented place, a really good restaurants. Just a, just a great city to live in. Um, but that has all changed. Uh, certainly since 2019, that has changed dramatically. Indeed, last week, the New York Times uh, spent, did, did a four, four separate stories and opinion pieces about Portland, Oregon, uh, destri- describing the homelessness, the, the, the fentanyl, the drug use, the open drug use, the the violence, the public safety concerns, the harassment, the empty office buildings, the storefronts that have never opened. And this is 2023. We also, if you remember back to 2020, Portland was the epicenter of the BLM riots. When the protests turned into riots, Portland embraced that, or the radicals, the crazies in Portland embraced that, and they continued for months after there were no longer protests or riots anywhere else. They continued to break windows, destroy downtown, try to set fire to a federal building. Uh, it was clearly the epicenter. Uh, Portland has become a, uh, really over the last 10 years, kind of a poster child for progressives, uh, you know, crazy left uh, mayors and city councils and what they can, quote, accomplish. This is a poster child for what happens when you hand over total administration of a a city to uh, the worst elements in the Democratic Party and on the left. Uh, They've taken this beautiful city with an amazing downtown, a fabulous place to hang out, and they've turned it into a place nobody wants to go to, where even the New York Times recognizes it as a devastating place. It's as bad, if not worse, as downtown San Francisco. And, uh, you know, you can blame the BLM riots, but that was three years ago. You'd think a city like Portland could have recovered. Now, and, and let's remember, this is not a poor city. This is not a city with huge levels of poverty. This is not a city... Uh, that that hasn't flourished and prospered in the past. This is a city of upper middle class, wealthy people. This is uh, filled with upper middle class, wealthy people. Again, a beautiful city, uh, a city that a lot of people want to live in, would like to live in if it changed. A city where a lot of people have made a lot of money over the years, a city of a highly educated population. But a city that cannot escape the consequences of its own leftist policies. A city that doesn't build housing, so generates generates um, homelessness, a city that tolerates uh, all manner of behavior in public spaces, uh, a city that does not emphasize a police and, and public safety, uh, a, a city that just has uh, ignored the, the needs and, and, and demands of, uh, of um, its business community. Anyway, because of all this attention Portland has suddenly got last week from the New York Times, ooh, people in Oregon suddenly realize, whoa, there must be an emergency. By the way, uh, just to give you one more statistic, downtown foot traffic from March to May this year 
is down, uh, is just 37%, not down 30%, 37% of what it was in 2019. So more than more, significantly more than half the people used to go to downtown and walk around, don't go there anymore. <laughs> Again, a, a city that used to have this really friendly hometown, downtown kind of atmosphere, nobody goes there anymore. 37%. Part of that is nobody goes to work there. Nobody goes there. They don't want to go to restaurants there. They don't want to hang out there. Anyway, because of all this attention, the governor of Oregon suddenly realizes the crisis, and the governor of Oregon su suddenly uh, step forward, and they're going to they're gonna find a way to deal with this. And the way to do that is, of course, the setting up a committee. So it was big news today that we now have a, a, a task force, a task force to bolster, right, to bolster um, the, uh, the downtown Portland. So they're going to have a committee. They're, they're going to meet. They're going to get input from the public. Uh, they're going to confer. Uh, the, uh, s the mayor of Portland and, and city council members have been invited to participate. It's going to be run by uh, a, business, a business person. Um, and uh, this is all by the instigation of the governor. You can tell when somebody is taking an issue really, really, really seriously, and they really, really, really want to make changes, then you, you know they're serious about it when they form a task force. That is, all right, go Oregon, go Portland. <laughs> I mean, it's sad. It's sad. Again, I, I, I've always enjoyed going to Portland, a beautiful city. I, I'm not looking forward to going there again.